have a good day to all the students. So here we are going to discuss the fifth lesson. That means the very first lesson in our second term uh, in the class today. So before going to the name of the lesson, I'm going to move to a small picture over here. So here now I'm going to show you a small picture, uh, actually two pictures. So you see the first picture, there is a darkened room. And in the next picture, you see that there is a lighted room. So what my question here is, can you see something clearly inside this darkened room? Are you able to see something in this darkened room? So your answer will be no. So you see that you cannot see a lot of things very clearly in this darkened room. But when it comes to this lighter room, you see very clearly what is inside it. So you see that in this uh, part of the lesson, what we are going to learn is about light. And at the same time, by using light, we see things, which means in the lesson, we are going to learn light and the vision. So now here we are going to see what are the things that are required to see something by us. So when we look at something, what are the basic things that we are able to see? So, for that, we are going to do a simple activity by closing our eyes. So, let's see how the activity is going to go on. So, first, you have to keep your, uh, keep your hands here and try to observe the lines in your palms. So, you will see that there are patterns of lines in your palms. So, observe them very carefully. And then in, as the next step, you have to keep your eyes closed and try to see what is the pattern of the lines in your palm. So what will you see now? You will probably see that there is nothing that you can see without your eyes. So you see that there are actually two requirements for seeing something. So the very first requirement is your own eyes. So, requirements for vision. So, very first thing now you have observed that that's your own house. Okay, now you will see that there is a second requirement as well. So, what is that? For that, you are going to do another small activity. So, now please pay your 100% attention on this one because this is a very, very required part. So just to see the second requirement for your vision, Ogalanta, Penima da Washakana Devani, Sadhaki Mukakta Kira Barana Pikarana activity mina mihimai na mai. So you are going to take a box now. So in the box, in the sides of the box, in the upper part, you are going to cut a large hole. And then towards the side, you are going to cut a small hole. So you see, you are going to take a cardboard box and in the upper side, you are going to cut a large hole. And in, in, in the side way, you are going to cut a small hole. And then you are going to do this simple matter. So the matter is something like this. So here is your cardboard box. So here is the large hole. And here is the small hole. And here is your cardboard box. Okay. Firstly, you are going to put some object inside your box. Suppose that you have a eraser with you. 
or a coin with you, you're going to put it inside the box. So now here, this is your eraser that you have put inside the box. Box again, no eraser can come and And then what you have to do is firstly, at the first step, you're going to close this large hole with a cardboard or some kind of a book or something. You are going to close this large hole. So the first step is close the large hole. And then you are going to observe what is inside the box by using this hole. So you are going to keep your eye to this hole. Which is a good thing. And then the second action that you are going to do is now this time you are going to take a lighter torch. And you are going to keep the torch over here. So the second step is you have a lighted torch and you are going to allow it to fall the light into the box. Box by keeping the uh, lighted torch on the large hole. So you have to keep the lighted torch. on the large hall. And then you are going to observe what is inside the box. Okay, this time what will happen? That one are wait. Yes, so we are going to the beginning now. So in the first step, we have kept closed the large hall and observe what is inside the box from here, from the hall over here. Next, at that time, you see that inside the box, there is no light. So without any light, you're not able to see the eraser. So what's going to happen? Cannot see the eraser. They can't And then when you come to the next step, what happens when you have kept a light here? To observe the eraser, you will see that by using the light of the torch, now this time you are able to see your eraser. So you can see the eraser now. So you see that in two situations, you observe two different things. In the second situation, you could see the eraser inside the box just because you have lighted the place. So you see that not only your eyes, then now at this place you see that your eyes are present. But there wasn't any use of that one because there was no light. So you see that for vision there are two requirements. The first one is your own eyes. The other one is there should be something for us to give light. So the second one is source of light. Yes, I hope that it is clear to you. So there are two requirements for vision. Uh, first one is eyes and the next one is the source of light. Okay. So now we are going to go to learn about the sources of light now. So when it comes to sources of light, Lama, there will be, uh, they will be the objects that gives out their uh, actually light. In the me, then source of light. So there are two kinds of sources of light. For some objects, they cannot produce their own light. And for some objects, they release some light, but it is also made by themselves. So let's see what are they. Yes. So you see that we call luminous objects for those of the objects which can emit their own light. So here the light is produced by their themselves. 
So, for example, if you see here, uh, the firefly. And then here is the bulb. Not only that one, sun. And then light emitting mushrooms oh, like this. Yeah. And glow orb. All these are natural ones that can emit their own light. So we call them as luminous objects. And at the same time, there are luminous artificial objects as well. Like the bulb, it is made by man and it is artificial, but still it produces its own light. And then you also see there are light sources like moon. So you might have heard this story. Even though the moon is having a light, you see that the night sky is actually lighted by the moon. But the thing is, moon is always getting light from sun, so it never produces its own light. The moon is having sun gain. So, because of that, you see that moons, planets, like objects are considered as non-luminous objects. They cannot emit their own light. Okay, so the next part of the lesson that we are going to move into is the transmission of light through objects. So, you will observe that through some objects, we can see light and through some of the objects we cannot observe light very carefully so for that we are going to do a small activity now so as you see here we are taking a candle and there is some object we take to observe through and there you take a card box which are with a hole because you are going to focus more on the uh, observed object मैं ऑब्जर्व करना ऑब्जेक्ट को मुद्रे बाला नोर नहीं सा तमाय आपे कार्डबोर्ड देखा कर नहीं माहौल लेका कदर थे नहीं तो आपे यह है यह में ही आने नहीं है ये आपे स्पॉट करने से ना वितरण मनी पे नहीं तो ये नहीं सा आपे में कार्डबोर्ड के थे ना हॉल लेकिन तमाय में तो ना बाला ने मुकद्दा पे नहीं uh, so, first of all, I'll tell you what's going to happen in the activity. Okay, so you take your candle here. So, candle is the light source that you are going to observe. And this is the observed object. So, you are going to change the observed object time to time. Sometimes you are going to take a thin glass sheet. Sometimes you will take a metal sheet, not a wooden sheet. Leave a gate, if not a decorative glasses, my days are a cave, a cave observed object with the bigger. Eva gave me up a balanus and a hurry at a clearly balan. It turned to the Tara Kapi Avadani dinner, a few metanally, killing me make a diha balan in a we take a cardboard box with a hole and we are going to observe this object through this hole. So you keep your eye on this hole and you are going to observe this one. Yes. So what you are going to observe through, through the object is whether you are able to see the light. Whether I am able to see the light of the candle. And then again I will also see whether I am able to see the Flame of the candle, candle ki dalle mata pein aur. And then sometimes I will see nothing at all here. So I told you three observations here. The first observation says, can see the flame. You can dalle pein aur dalle hai and candle so, and light. And the second observation should can be something like only light can be seen. Now this time the flame cannot be seen. And then in the third one, the third observation, you will also see that uh, nothing can be seen. Okay, so 
So here I have thought of doing this activity with you with a small torch now. So the first object I'm going to take is a thin uh, sheet of glass. Actually, I'm not having a sheet of glass at the moment. Uh, so because of that, I was taking, a, uh, I, I have intended to take a plastic sheet now. So okay, here it is. So now I'm going to uh, use my uh, torch here. Now it's going to be lighted now. And when I'm going to see through this object, you are going to see whether the torch can be observed here. At the same time, the light can be observed here. So you see that when I use this thin plastic sheet, uh, you see that my torch is actually very clearly seen through this object. At the same time, the light of the uh, torch also can be seen very clearly. So you see the object I have used here is a thin uh, poly plastic. So thin, let's say, transparent plastic. Huh? There are a lot of plastic. Huh? Okay, so just observe this one now. So I have this glass bottle with me. So it's going to be somewhat dusted now today. Yes, it cannot be observed well. So now the next thing I'm going to take is this decorative glass bottle. And I'm going to focus my torch here. You see that the torch cannot be seen clearly, but you are able to see the light. No, So you see through objects like decorative glasses, you are only able to see the light. And then what I'm going to take is some polythene, which is not transparent. And just see what's going to happen now. Yes, this polythene, you see that the light can be seen, but the torch cannot be seen very clearly. No? Okay. Then the last one I'm going to observe here is this wooden sheet. I don't have a wooden sheet here, so I have taken this block of wood. So you see, I'm going to keep my torch over here. And are you able to see any light or the torch through this one? So you see, there's nothing you can see, no? So you see, through some objects, we cannot see anything through the objects. So they are nothing can be seen. For example, you can take wooden block. Not only that one, no, my metal sheet also belongs to this one. So you see, through some objects, you are able to see the candle, flame, and the light both. And through some objects, you cannot see the flame, but only the light. Yes, children, so you will see that through some objects you can see the flame and the light, like in thin transparent plastic, thin glass sheets, you will be able to see the flame and the light. So how did this happen? It's something like this, Lamai. So here the candle there, and here the observed object. And this is what you are going to look at it through. No, so suppose that your candle sends four light rays. And what's going to happen to these kind of objects, like in thin, to thin gas, what's going to happen is all the light rays sent by the candle is going to go through these objects. So you see that light is transmitted through these objects very well. So such objects we call as transparent objects.
And then if you consider the second one where you have only seen the light of the candle, so what's going to happen is something like this. The candle is there, the observed object is there. And this is the board that you are going to look through. So if the candle is sent four light rays, what's going to happen to these kind of objects? Only few light rays are going through the object. So you only see the light of the candle. So you say light is transmitted partially. So we can have a partially. So such objects we call as translucent objects. And then the last kind of objects are something like this. The candle is there, the observed object, the cardboard. And you see through these kind of objects, when the candle sends four light rays, none of these light rays are going to go through the object. So you can say light do not, and it said does not transmit. So such objects you call as opaque objects. So you see that you have three different kinds of objects now, transparent, translucent, and opaque. So here, the through these objects, light is going to go through very, very well. So they are transparent objects. So those of the objects where the light is sent partially, translucent objects and for those through which light does not pass are opaque objects. So then we are going to focus our attention on the transmission of light through liquids. So this is also the same story. So here also we are going to take a glass bottle which is filled with different kinds of objects, uh, with different kinds of liquids. And you are going to keep a candle here and over here you keep your eye and you are going to observe through the bottle these three different things that we have observed earlier. Whether you are able to see the candle flame and the light both. Whether you only see the light of the candle and whether you are, cannot see anything at all. So when you see that, you will see that through the bottle, you can see the candle flame and the light very clearly when there is water. And yes, and then when you have like something like soft drinks, kerosene oil, you will be only able to see the light of the candle. And when you have used engine oil, you cannot see anything at all. So in such a way, we also label these liquids in uh, three. The first one says the transparent liquids, second one translucent, and the third one opaque, like the earlier way we have discussed. Okay. So till we meet again with the second part of the lesson, Lamai, we'll now say goodbye. So let's see what we were learning for now. So we were learning the requirements for vision and then we were learning about the uh, way how to observe these two requirements and then we were learning about the transmission of light through objects and even through the liquids. So we will learn more about the light rays, light beam in the second part of lesson. So until then, goodbye to all of you.